I want to know how that works. How do you do a TV show? How do you do a concert? You know, how do you host? And what do you do behind the scenes? So it was really a great experience. And every artist brought their A game. Everybody was was like a 110% there with all their jet lag. Some people arrived the day before uh, because of uh, schedule. Uh, okay. We're not jet lag. I have jet lag. I have a big case of jet lag. Swing it. Huh? Swing it. Swing it, exactly. What do you think about Discovery Mode in our neighborhoods in America? You know, that, that overwhelming response that you can see in person on stage. I discovered many things. Uh, probably the most important lesson I discovered is how hungry they are for Filipino artists. Hindi lang yung asa pa. There were so many shows before us, even in the same day, that did equally well because of that factor. Napaka-uhaw na uhaw ang Filipinos all over America trying to get back to the concert or the entertainment scene from some of their favorite artists. So can you believe us bringing ABS-CBN bringing their the whole cast of ASA all on one stage. I learned that they're so hungry, so thirsty for it. I've also learned that everybody in the audience, when you bring up the pandemic, especially Mario, you can see there's a, a common sigh, uh, sigh of relief. Uh, some people, uh, just the sigh of, that, you know, that last sigh after a long cry because they may have lost someone. Uh, the frustrations of the government rules of, of do we have to swap, do we not have to swap. Even the artists on in, in ASA, we, there were so many rules about us having to swap every other day. And then we decided that even if we found that someone was positive during the actual shoot, but well, there's nothing they can do. I think that's the new lifestyle now where if you have it, you need to be away from people, things like that. I just learned that, that there was so much that we all had in common, not just the artist to artist, but artist to audience. Uh, let's talk about ano na lang, uh, loyalty uh, between the audience. Last na uh, I think one of the factors uh, sa staying power may sure loyalty. No? Are you staying with Vicor, with ABS-CBN? Uh, tell us why. Loyalty is a word that's very hard to use nowadays. So oh, yeah, the, people yeah. take it too lightly. Um, I think for ABS-CBN, I'm going to answer that part of the question. ABS-CBN, for, for the very first time in history, they signed a contract with an artist on the strip of Las Vegas. And oh, Bonga. Diba? Bonga, Bonga yun. So we chose a room that was overlooking the strip, and uh, Corey and Carlos were there to formally invite me back as a cup of media. So I signed another contract with ABS-CBN, and I, I was very emotional, and so were they, because I asked them, do we still need a contract? After all we've been through together and, and what we are still continuing to go through together, I don't need a piece of paper to stay loyal anymore. I don't think they need that so yummy. There was a time we needed to know make to make sure everything's in writing, blah blah blah. So I was so honored and touched that they wanted it official and I think they were equally touched that I could give a doubt about a piece of paper. You don't need to write my, my, my name on a piece of paper. For me to know that I fought for you, I stayed with you, uh, that I caught in pay, all of these things that we all did just to try to survive. And, and now we did a big show in Las Vegas, Nevada. So that's my loyalty has been there ever since the beginning. I was the very first artist before, I think even before you, Mario, uh, yeah. of ABS-CBN. Yes, yes. We were like one of the first artists there. So when the new ABS-CBN opened, I was there. So it's very hard for me to see myself anywhere else. I have been tempted to go to the other side, to many other sides, but I feel, and I, told, I tell this to the people who work with me, I could be wealthier, I could be even more intriguing because I made some, such a move, but will I be happy? And the answer always is no. Not because the other stations that offered me are not good stations, but because it's love and loyalty really that keeps me uh, where I am today. With Viper the Month, on their 50th year of being Vicor. Maybe for them, but maybe the Mount Kailangan. But in this case, Kailangan, because I had come from different record. I think, you know, to this day, to this day, I don't even know what happened, why I ever went to another recording company. I don't know what happened, because there was never ever any bad blood between me and Vicor. I, maybe I don't know. I don't even know what happened. I just, the contract ended and I said, I thought you're supposed to move on, you know? 
and I had great success with Pauly East Records, and I love them, and I adore them, and they work so hard for me. They picked me up from the ground when when I had the, you know that big, very publicized divorce thing, and nobody was calling my phone, and then it was Ramon Chuey who gave me that chance, and my boss Vic and I had never lost our love and relationship for each other. So when he saw that they were turning 50, he said, we need to get Martin back. Can you please find out who the contract was as a police record? And it just so happened, wala. Kasi sabi na maraming mas puro pa sa akin, hindi naman kailangan mag-recording contract, pare. Just record your own shit, man. Do your thing. Produce it and you make the money. Forget it. They're forgetting, just like how some people have forgot the press and things like this. They think that the online stuff, sorry our children, but they think that <laughs> online stuff is the way to go. The Facebook Live, that's great. But this face-to-face, -face, to being able to see you, Mario, and how you uh, uh, how you've treated me, and how you, um, you've made, oh, and I speak to the whole press. How we treated you. How you, how you, how you treated me as, as a, one of your subject matters, uh, your interest in whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm seeing or saying, you've made me, you've broken me, you brought me back to life. These are the people you need to see face to face and say thank you for all that you've done. In all of my 40 years, I have been made and I have been broken. And then I have been made again. So I will always be a work in progress and you will always be the people who will put me back together again. And you can't do that online. You can't do that from a from a barcode or whatever, QR code. <laughs> we need this face to, even if you don't like me really, I want to know why. I don't want to hide behind my computer or my iPad or whatever. I want to know why. You know that. The press know that about me. My correction, Martha, I, I didn't break you. <laughs> not ever. Maybe not you. But the likes of there's some, 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 a couple of names I could mention were no longer with us. Ricky Lowe, Diva. You see Ricky recently, right? I mean, it's, you, we feel this. We, even as artists, we, we know that that we were nothing without any of you. Okay, okay. And now at this point, the uh, Viva Live is, uh, wow, sponsoring your, your M14, no? but, uh, but uh, how, how time uh, made full circle. Full circle, Dama Kajan and Mario, because uh, uh, Viva Live, Viva Live is, is producing this show at the Solaire, which Solaire, see, they asked me for, Mark, we want you in Arneta, we want you in all of Asia. I said, no, I want to do this in an intimate fashion where I'm not screaming on stage, I wanted to be able to tell my story behind every song, which I don't usually do. But now that I've been in the business 40 years, Viva Live has decided to partner with, of course, using using Solaire. My home court advantage is Solaire because that's that's the, my favorite place to perform. So they have allowed me to do this on a November 19th at the theater at Solaire to give you 40 years of my music. So, and it's so great because the person who gave me the very, very first break is Big De Rosario. So this is very meaningful for me. In fact, I, will, I was gonna say before the show, but I wanted to dedicate the whole concert to Big De Rosario. Because wow. without him, I don't think I would be celebrating 40 years. You know, so most people would probably say, we don't need you anymore. Because and that mga artists so Viva, you don't need you don't need one more when they ask for me. So the least I can do is is, to, is that dedicate the whole evening to the person who actually discovered me, and that's Big Dama Sorry. Thank you so much, Mario. Thank you, Mario. I love you, man. Kylie, salamat. Here's I think here's one person who broke Martin. Sorry, Alan Jones. Grab you. Hi, Mark. Hi, Alan. Since this is a celebration of your four, 40 unparalleled years in the business, uh, we want to know una, ano, first, yung, tell us uh, a little something about your upcoming concert. Ano yung magagana dito? Ano yung mga repertoire mo? Ano yung expect namin from this? At kung kami nahirapan, because sa dami dami yung songs na ginawa ko in the last 40 years, with Vicor and with every company that I work with, it's hard to choose the right one. And I'm sure, marami madi-disappoint. Why didn't he sing this? Why didn't he sing that? So my list of songs for November 19 are songs I know or I'm pretty sure are the ones you really, really want to hear as opposed to coming up with something because I have my favorites of my songs but it's not the favorites of those of everybody. It's not a common favorite for everybody. So I chose the songs that I could be wrong. These are the songs in my last 40 years 
that people are it's like number one, number two, or number ten on their list of Martin songs. Another thing, Alan, that I'm doing is I'm having to relearn my old songs because I don't sing those songs anymore. But the good news is, Alan, at this point in my life, and this is my career, as I celebrate 40 years, I've learned to embrace me. I've always tried to be someone else or sound like someone else or sing someone else's song. Kasi sikat siya. Baka yun ang hinahanap ng audience. But I think after 40 years, I've now been given the license to just sing me, just do me. And I think that's what people who sit in the seats in front of me, that's what they want to see. So I made a lineup for the first time in my life. I made a lineup of, I think, 98% Martin songs. It's risky. So we have to find ways to keep you awake and maybe the stories that we tell in between. Remember, I did this already at the Walt Disney Concert Hall uh, last August 28th. Uh, and it was yes, congrats. And then imagine the people in the audience are not even from, I mean, they're all Filipino, but Filipinos have migrated and they, they reacted so well. I could hear their every comment and the reaction to the songs that I've not done in a long, long time that I'm, I'm doing. So that's what you're going to hear. And you're going to see me go down memory lane. Um, also, I wasn't going to announce it, but I think I should announce it. Of all my 40 years, who has my musical director been? Ever since. It's always Louis O. Louis Ocampo. So I decided, you know what? This is Louis has come to a point in his career, I think he's turning 45 years. See Louis, 45, 42. Like 45 years in the business. So it's happy to Louis, it's time to be my special guest. Not my musical director, not pour the whole pressure of the show on him. So we got the Louis, the number one fan of Louis, and that's Marvin Carrillo. And we will guest Louis in the show and, and preempt his own, because I know he has a concert for his 45 years in the business, preempt it by honoring him on that day for all the great shows he's given me in my 40 years. He will be my special guest. There'll be some, a couple of other surprises, but that's the one thing I can tell you about, and that's Louis Ocampo as my special guest. Not my MD anymore. Said, Tami Sam sa ano, sa tawag ng tanghalan, he's already morado, di ba? Hindi na pwede yung ano, MD lang, ko hindi very special guest. Wow. Pero Mark, you don't have any other guests that can see Mr. Louis Ilan? Yes, because I know there's a lot of copy in, in all your minds are probably thinking we should guess this person, that person, and all of this. But I think people want to hear my songs. I, I don't really like the events. You know, on my birthday, I'm the guy who won't show up to the party. I don't like going to parties in my honor for me. I never enjoy it. Well, this will be the first time, enjoy it or not, where I'm going to be the star of my own show. Because I, I want to be able to, you guys, I have the license because I've been there for 40 years. And that's what we're celebrating. I have the license now to go back to memory lane and bring you to back in the 80s, 82, 85, the 90s. Maybe tell a couple of stories, like there's a song, I don't even know if you know it. It's the answer of Tui Kao, the most remade song. Sharon, Regine, everyone's done a version of uh, George Canseco and Louis Ocampo's Mikao. Did you know that he, right before he passed, he wrote a song called Nasaan Kaman? That's the answer to the cow. Who wrote it? George Cansen. Oh, wow. And then after I recorded it, shortly after he died. And his only wish was to be together with his wife again, right? That's what the cow was for. He had an extended version of that. It's called the Saan Kaman. Louis and I will probably do a little bit of that. But no one knows that story. You haven't sang that bad. No, I, I think, oh my God, in my 40 years, maybe once. And it's such a beautiful song. Nice. Okay, because we know you, Marnie, because I've seen almost all of your concerts. But I like to enjoy it, but you enjoy it. So, you're so tired, 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 you're probably commit suicide watching the show that long. So, um, there's, it's still gonna, Alan, I'm telling you, we're still gonna be missing a lot of songs. But 
you just, the, the, I think attention span of people now, especially kids nowadays, your attention span now is very short. You're gonna go to your phone any second. I can see it, the text. You're dying to do it right now, I can feel it. So that's how I do my lineup now in my shows. Sometimes we'll take out the second verse. Because yeah, that's the new that's the new age now. You have to be quick, fast. Don't tell us long boring stories. There better be a funny ending because I listened to this whole spiel before that long ass medley. So and then we're going to add a little spice to the songs that I've done so often. But I'm just happy to be doing it again, after, you know, to, to celebrate 40 years. Concerts are never boring. The your energy is great. They were boring, boring, boring. The audience. This is the question of questions for Mark. Ilang for for decades na ito, di ba? Meron na kong four talaga questions. Okay. Right? Ilang ano nga 40 years? Mystical siya. So four of your um first. Four most memorable events in your uh, 40 years that you can make Four? Yeah. The first one has to be August 20, Folk Arts Theater, 1983. That's my very first concert ever. It was never televised because it was so bad. Not one right to one right note. I was so out of tune. Back then, we had small sound systems. Back then, believe it or not, the screaming was endless. So that's my excuse as to why I couldn't hear myself on stage. When we saw the TV playback, which was also the first time for us anyway, to shoot a concert with I think two or three cameras. We, we didn't have any of the special effects you have now these days. It was so bad. I wasn't in tune once. So it's never been seen. So that's one. The second one would probably be uh, the first time I did a football stadium show which nobody was doing at the time, and that's uh, March 17, 1984, Martin's Rage. Uh, the third would be when I became a father for the very first time. So is that your baby name, Mike? Martin's Rage, mm -hmm. University of Life football team. Yeah. Uh, 45,000 people. Wow. And the tickets were 10 pesos. Do you even know what 10 pesos is? Have you ever seen it? <laughs> 10 pesos. 10 pesos, yung sa Okay. 10 pesos, the paper bill daw. <laughs> Ouch. So that would be one. And then the third of your four questions would probably be when I became a father. Then my singing changed, my writing style changed. I thought everything was forever. I thought everything was, there was no end to anything about being a father, being a husband. The fourth is when I was no longer a husband. Because then I started writing songs of, of regret, songs of I'm sorry, songs of look what I've done. I mean, I was suicidal at one time. In showbiz, you go through these stages. Those four would be probably the, the highlights because they helped me to become who I am today. Yes. A second, Mabilis naman, four of your closest and most, um, I don't know, bestest friends in the industry. In the industry? Ooh. Number one, Pops. Number two, Gary Vee. Number three, Regine. Uh, Regine and Augie has to be together because Major yes. they're in the same house. Um, Ariel Rivera. Okay, third is yung four of your most favorite uh, song of yours. Ooh, four long? Yeah. Um, say That You Love Me in no particular order. Say That You Love Me, You Are My Song, I'll Be There For You. Um, probably my, uh, as far as Tagalog, Kaili Yes, and last time. Four of the worst intrigues ever in experience mo. That you wrote? Or no. In the Ricky You know, all the intrigues ever. I, I don't have four favorite or or great intrigues because they were all true. And the problem ng artista na yun. I mean, they, they, they're so used to telling the truth. Back then, we were so used to lying. Lying was good before. It made us mysterious. We could hide. Oh no, I'm, we're just friends. Bullshit. We're just friends. But now you can see it online. Now you, there's no more lying. So uh, what's my point? Of the four intrigues written about me, all four were true. Yes, I was uh, uh, unfaithful. Yes, I was not a, a good father or husband or whatever it was. All of those things were, were true, except maybe one. When they first tried to ask, who is going to be an unwed father? It was either Raymond Lauchenko, Mark Nyever, or Gary Golenshano. That one was wrong. That was part of that. So, but all the intrigues, Alan, we needed. We don't have intrigues anymore because you know the answer. That's why we have no shows. We have no more the buzz and all yes. the 
You, you know it. Before tomorrow, you know what the interview is going to be. And then the next day, it's solved already. Were you the unwed father? Was I the unwed father? No. No, you were and, not. See? I know. Yeah. See? And you believe? It wasn't even me. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And that was Bob Castillo. Just so you know. I love you, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was Adam Sorry, Jones. Are you running a charity? No, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> It'll make me taller. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'll do the same thing. Thank you. All right. For our next question, we have Jojo Gabinet at fpap.ph. Jojo Gabinet at fpap.ph. So uh, dark in here, man. Eh? Like you're landing a plane. Hi, mm -hmm. Mark. Hi, Joe. Uh, I How are you? Know, I just want to look at the highlights that I've been seeing for 40 years of my Ooh, career. Of my career? Probably those, those four earlier, the concerts and so on. Um, I'm, I'm one of the highlights I think uh, that, that I didn't mention is is the, the highlight of of bouncing back. That's a, that's a talent that I learned how to come back. I have fallen so often. i failed so many times that it's become one of the highlights of my career, my 40 years, how to bounce back. And that's a talent that some of these young kids probably will never have to learn. Because over the And then one day it's this guy, this girl, this group, this love team. Back in the day, you were love team. I even married mine, right? So when uh, all the failures I've gone through in life, Taught me how to bounce back. That's got to be the number one highlight that brought me to this, to your question. Martin, you know, 40, 40 years is a very tough act to follow, no? Uh, ano mga thoughts mo na umabot ng 40 years and going strong in career? It went, it went by so fast. The fact that you're saying 40 years that we're here, that, that is even written on a, on, a, on a poster, it's news to me because it didn't feel like 40 years, even during the bad and slow days when the phone wasn't ringing, we had phones before, just so you know. When the phone wasn't ringing, this is hard because my host is younger, so much younger than me. Um, it, that was a time that, that really went slow, but as I recall it, as I remember it now, I'm this. I can't believe it's been 40. I don't, can't believe the number is 40. But the real hard question to answer is what's next. That's gonna be the hardest. That's why I said earlier, I've learned to embrace me. Meaning to say, my niche, my, where I belong in the industry. Like Barry Manilow, if you heard him sing any other person's song, you might even be disappointed, right? Or, ang ganda yung version niya, or, sana kinatan yung song niya. And what's my point? I need to sing my songs from this day to the next 40 years. That's my niche. Now, if I'm gonna do a corporate show and they have a certain theme, sing it. <laughs> but if it's a Martin concert, we can't do it now the way I used to, which is every year, twice a year, sometimes three times a year, because it's going to be the same songs. So I'll have more collaborations, me with another artist, me with many other artists, big shows, small shows. Now that I've been 40 years in the business, there's no such thing as a small show. There's no such thing as a big show. There's no such thing as a small paycheck. There's no such thing as a big paycheck. Billing is no longer, it, now that's optional. I could care less about billing. Nothing matters to me anymore except to entertain and to enjoy what I'm doing. There's no pressure. There's no competition in my, in my mind. I'm not trying to compete with someone the way I did in the 80s and 90s, which was really fun, just so you know. But that whole fan, fan mentality of trying to get fans, if you want to stay with me for the next 40 years, then stay. If you don't want, that's fine too. I'm not going to cry over small things anymore, the way I used to. So how does it feel now after 40 years or still on top? Ah, the only thing I'm on top of is a stool right now because I don't think I'm on top of anything. I think now it's hard to measure what does on top mean. Does it mean sold out concerts? Everyone does it. Does it mean, how is it following? Followers? Hits? Followers. Does it mean that? Because I bet you she has more followers than me in, in some platforms. It's really weird. I'm the concert king, but she probably has more followers than me. That's how it works. The, the industry works now. So you really have to somehow put blinders on and not worry about those things and just do you. That's what I tell these new young artists. Just do you. Don't try and be a game. Don't try and be anyone else. Just do you. 
Martin, do you still remember kung sino nagbigay sa iyo ng ano, concert king title? Bob Castillo. Bob Castillo. And he meant it sarcastically. It wasn't a title, but the fans used it as the title. I, I, if you ask me about the concert king title, I hate it because it's so much pressure. I wish they said something like he, the wannabe concert king or the soon to be or the next in line or something, but the concert king. What gets better than concert king, diba? Right? So you have to be good. So the way I, I've, I've told myself is I don't have to be the concert king. I have to have a show and everything I do has to be fit for a king. So you're the king and you're the king. And you're the king and everybody there. You're all the, the audience is the king. The show has to be the kind of show that is fit for a king. That's what makes me the concert king. Thanks, Marty. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. That was Georgia Gabriela of pep.ph. Our next special will be coming from June Lally of Filipino Star. Okay, so June. Did June leave? Is he here? Uh, he's here. Hi, June. Just so you know, June, without June, I don't think I would be in this tool as well. Yeah, um, uh, Martin, congratulations. And thank you, Jim. Thank you, um, But, uh, yun nga, Mark, um, in fairness to you, in your 40 years, isa ka sa pinaka-love ng entertainment press. Kasi love na love ng entertainment press. Yeah. Oh, uh, I still remember, pag may mga projects ka, uh, talagang, uh, pwedeng walang press con, but gusto mo talaga. Oh, so, uh, in your 40 years, you know, if the kids of today, the popular kids of today, could realize that fame is very temporary. So you have to enjoy all you can get. But back in the day when I started, talaga minahanap ko yung mga people's tonight, people's journal. Ano, nasa cover ba ako? That's how it was before. Yung pala, intriga pala. It's all wrong or, or, or cheese piece. Whatever it is, you know that saying before, Good or bad press is better than no press at all. Well, for me, I think the new artists are, are missing the point of our relationship together. Even again, even if you are, well, what you kids now call a basher. Back in, we were bashing before the word basher was ever used. That they would bash you, make you a better artist, make you stronger, make you ask questions like why, make you explain yourself to a jury of people as opposed to a, the lens of a camera which is so much better. But the most uh, important thing about the press for me, June, is the relationships that we have through the years. I know this now because I've been in the business 40 years. No artist can tell you if they have a relationship, good or bad, with the press, if they didn't spend 40 years with the same press people. I've grown up with people who have become my detractors, who have become my friends. Can you imagine Ricky Lowe was the one who said that uh, I was gonna get married? He was right. Ricky Lowe was the one who said that my co-star and, and uh, love team is pregnant with a child. He was right. And these people, you think, could become enemies, but they're my friends. And I think it's so important for the new artists to get to know the press a little bit better, to give them a little bit more importance. If there's a Christmas party, they need to attend. Because if it wasn't for any of you, each of you, even the press people who are not here, they're so important to the careers and to the betterment of the industry because you make us better. We will never get worse when you, if you write bad or write good. We can only become better at what we're doing thanks to you. People don't see that. They probably don't even read their own press anymore. But it was so important back in the 80s and 90s and I think that's why I'm here today because I was able to, to have this relationship with the press. Ang ganda. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, ang dami mo ang kwento, no? Before, uh, pag uh, natagrapit ka sa kalsada, nakikita mo yung mga tabloid, talagang uh, tumitingin-tingin ka talaga, o. Oh. And uh, yun nga, uh, ikaw, isa ka yung, ano eh, I still remember um, sa anniversary concert mo, I think 10 years ago, your 30th, uh, pinag-grill uh, mo pa yung mga press ng burger. Yeah, oh, oh. that was talagang, fun. Oh, talagang nagpapakita ka ng importansya sa amin. So, uh, we thank you for that. Uh, Hanga kami sa iyo. Pero, Mark, um, eto nga, M4D, uh, siyempre nauna to sa DDLA in um, Disney, uh, Walt Disney uh, Concert Hall. 
Christian o gano'n kaibaan na ito? Uh, kasi ako ay really stayed in LA, pinanood ko yun noong August 28. Oh, super grabe, ang ganda, nakakaiyak. Sana si Sartino ba nandito din? Tutug ka mag-drums din ba siya? That's the only thing that's gonna make this show not as as bongacious yeah. as you say. Kasi wala yung kids ko. Robin Ram and Santino are, both, are all three gonna be stuck in America and doing their thing. Uh, Robin and Ram starting their lives now on their own. And Santino with all these different challenges. They have to stay in the States. So I have to find a way to tell you about my kids uh, through this show. And I think you, I think you might like what we're gonna do in place of that. But no, to answer your question, Santino's not gonna go up and steal the show and he, he grabbed my microphone and started telling people to cheer and, and clap their hands. Then he played the drums for a five minute song, which is long for a special child to be that focused for that long. No? And then we started a new, um, because of Santino, we started a new foundation in America called SOFA. Okay? This is something you've never heard. SOFA, which is Sing Out for Autism. Uh, his mother and I, who are still very good friends, put this foundation together to try and raise money to help other people who don't really want to be vocal about their special children. A lot of people are ashamed of it. A lot of couples have broken up because of it, namely me and Santino's mother. But we've realized that we, this is going to be a lifelong journey. So we're trying to help other people who have similar journeys by doing this uh, new foundation called SOFA. It's so funny because that the day that we started SOFA, um, Pops was there, yeah. Pops, Robin, Ram, and Santino, and the mother, Katrina, all of us in one room. So that in itself is really weird, but see what, what we do for our children, how life uh, has, you, how we have evolved uh, through all of this, that we all know that we have to be there for our children. Thank God Robin and Ram are not, uh, don't have any special issues, are not on the spectrum as they say, the way Santino is. But you know what was the hardest thing to do? Is to be able to say words like autism and special or you know, things you don't say those words to an actual child who has autism. Yet we were talking this way in front of Santino in the audience. So I realized we're saying words like autism and, and special needs on the spectrum. And he's right there. So that was the first time we actually told our child through this event that you are special. You have autism. You're an autistic child, which we try to not to tell our kids. We only realized it while we were on stage telling the audience about this new foundation we're, we're starting. So people were like in awe that he, from there he raised his hand. An audience, a special child raised his hand. I said, no, yes, you, well, what's your question? He goes, I'm not gonna play bad videos anymore. I'm not gonna. He started repeating everything I used to teach him about things he shouldn't watch that drives him crazy. So he's telling the audience about our relationship as a child with challenges and a parent trying to deal with his challenges. He went up on stage, started telling the audience, thank you for being here. The people were all in tears. Everybody was in tears. It was a special moment and I think people should know that we're very proud of, of our special child. And uh, we hope that we're able to help other parents and their special needs and children. Yeah, uh, Martin, tama na. Kasi even yung sa M40 mo sa Disney World uh, concert, <coughs> nag, uh, ang daming moments na nag-iyak yung audience because of you, Santino, Robin Ram, di ba? Uh, it's so uh, maganda. So, pero ang dami ng standing ovation. So, congratulations Thank for you. that. And syempre dito, I'm sure mag-standing ovation. Sana. So, uh, Thank you so much. Okay na po. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good luck. Thank and, you too. I love uh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was June Lali of Filipino Star. Our next question will be coming from Miss Anna Pingal of Pika Pika. I can hardly see you, Anna. I'm <laughs> sorry. Hi. Hindi niya ako maani. <laughs> anyway, ayan. 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 Ayan.
Meron ka pa bang dream concert na in terms of venue or guest list na iniisa, iniimagine? One of my dreams was to that Walt Disney concert also. Check, you know, ako na, parang bucket list of, of venues. That was one. Because I'm the first Filipino artist to perform there. Of course, Leia Salonga did it in 2008, but she's really more of a world artist. But literally from the Philippines, uh, I was the first. But that's one. Uh, of, of, the, of the venues, like I said earlier, okay sa akin kahit maliit na venue ngayon. Happy na ako dyan. Happy ako sa mga maliit na shows, sa malaking shows. But called Collaboration Dream, I would love to perform with an international artist na yung talagang back-to-back, -back, hindi lang guest. Kunya ni Michael Buble and yours truly together on stage, of all representing the Philippines and representing America, from just you know collaborating. That would be one of them. Another dream of mine, sa bucket list ko, is share share kayo sa inyo. Um, is the chance to give back. And that's one thing I don't know if any artist is even thinking about. But I give you an example. There's an artist that I have talked to already who did front act for me when he was a little boy. So I said, tell me when you're going to be in your hometown for a big concert, because I want to be the front act for you. And the guy goes, excuse me? You want to be my front act? That's my way of giving back. He was front act at the age of seven, and now he's a big star, and I want to front act for him to give back. And that for me is something on my bucket list. Darren Espanto. Oh. In Calgary, Canada, I said, if you ever have a big concert, I was gonna surprise him and just do it. But it looks like I have to tell him. And now I'm telling all of you that that's on my bucket list. I don't know when or where, but it's gonna happen. If our schedules can permit, I will give back to that seven-year-old kid who's now a big, big star. Parang lumalabas itong 40th anniversary concert ko. Will be a parang tribute mo sa mga nakasama mo sa 40 years na yun. Ito ko kay Boss Vic, at saka sino yung isang na-mention kanila, nag-mental block ako. Louis Ocampo? Louis Ocampo. Meron pa ba ng ibang... Dami. My father, my father for one, we did it also at the Walt Disney Concert Hall, where we paid tribute to my father. Of course, all the people who artists called fans, I have, a, I have a hard time with the word fans. That's one of two F words I don't like to say. <laughs> you get it, two of them. <clears throat> but all the F words that I like to say is friends. And these people have been my friends for years. So those who show up or those who watch it later on on YouTube, whatever, it's a tribute to them, because I don't think I would be on that stage without the friends who have been with me. Christy Carlos, who's here, represents Probably all the fan clubs or friend clubs that I have uh, still with me through the years. Um, aside from uh, Louis, it would also be the, the musicians, because we're going to have a bigger band, a bigger orchestra than we did in Walt Disney Concert Hall. I think Marvin is planning to put strings and horns and make it a little bit more special than what we did in, in Los Angeles. Um, to the musicians, because for me, they're the really gifted ones. They, are, they never get any credit and I want to be able to give them the credit that they deserve. They're the ones who went to school. They're the ones who had sleepless nights learning how to read and write music, but I'm getting all the applause. So for that night and the nights after that, I want it always to be an equal feeling thing between me and whoever band I'm using. That's Marvin Carrido and his band and his small orchestra that he's forming together. They will represent every musician that I have performed with, the production people, the one production assistant or the production manager, stage manager, Epoy, his name is Epoy. He's been with me since day one. We haven't worked with him for many, many years. We got him back to do this show, to be the production manager for this show as well. So it's a tribute to everyone. I don't ever want to take all the credit for anything that I've done. It's just because the people who were interested to hear my songs, a Viker has asked me to sign with them again. ABS, CBN is asking to sign with them again. After 40 years in the business, that's, no one could ask for any other better gift than having tiwala, that people who have faith in you. And that means so much to me. To be remembered, 
to be remembered while you're still alive. That's a great honor. Thank you, Martin. Congratulations. Thank you, sweetheart. Pay forward, can I know? Yes. Thank you. From now on, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anna Pinola Pika Pika. Our next special will be coming from Ms. Anna Lin Husa at Manila Bulletin. Hello, Martin. Hi. Hi, I'm Anna Lin Bulletin. Yeah. We were interviewing you a few months ago in Soler. Oh, yes. <laughs> Congrats for M4D. Thank you. Um, but I think an even bigger event would be when we reach 50 years. Of <laughs> that would be nice. Uh -huh. um, do you have a timetable of what you would like to do in the next 10 years on the way to your um, golden anniversary in showbiz? Like, um, first in your personal life, in your career. Because I think in, in your previous interview with us, you mentioned about getting married and... Um, ano, pa, ano pa yung bucket list mo? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, you already told us about your bucket list as well. So can you add to that, please? Thank you. Well, you know what's worked for me is not having a plan. Believe it or not, I don't know if that makes sense. But anything that comes my way, I'm equally happy. They're all blessings. And they somehow become uh, accolades in my life because they somehow have brought me to the next year, to the next year, to the next year. And what I mean by that are, are a chain of memories, moments that you'll remember and, 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 uh, and love to remember, not those memories you don't want to remember, or don't want to remember. In my case, in my personal life, I couldn't be happier. I introduced to you my girlfriend at the time, and I know that one day we will end up as husband and wife. I just don't know what day that is. But I've been so afraid of marriage. Um, I know that she's not afraid of it because she and I are both with children without having any husband or wife. So we're okay this way, but I think I owe it to her. She's really more the, wo the woman, I think. Because the wedding is all about the woman. You'll see when you get older. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I know that, that that's, that's something that we need to do uh, one of these days, but maybe not soon. But it's in the plan. I mean, it's really part of my life. And, and, and then it, if it makes, takes me another 10 years to give you another moment like this, where we're talking about my history and so on, maybe that will be part of those, those questions. So how is it like now that you've been 10 years married? Who knows? Only God knows what the plan is. I just I'm looking forward to it. I hate to plan because it's it's not fun. It's more fun than oh my god, I have a show here. Oh my god, I have an offer there. What? And they, they're gonna try and get me for one teacher. Can I talk about that joy or no? Joy? No. No? <laughs> no sorry. <laughs> but when I signed with ABSCB, I get other offers for me. So up on that. Never talk end. show. Uh, huh? Never talk show. No one wants talk shows anymore again because of your attention span. <laughs> No, even shows in America, J Jimmy Kimmel, all of oh, Kimmel, and uh, more James Colbert. Colbert, he was ending his show already because they're running out of it, people who are getting tired of that. You know, so our, like the talk show I'm doing now, LSS. Long story short, it's on ANC. It's like 30 minutes. It's that fast. And that's the only thing that people can tolerate before they go crazy and want to watch something else. That's how it is. So. Yeah. Uh, I like what I'm doing now on ANC, LSS, long story short. That'll be part of my plan to continue to do the talk show, maybe by way of, uh, what do you call that? Podcast. Uh, podcast. You've been telling me that since before, that we should do a podcast. Maybe that's where I'm going to go, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but I'm having fun with, with all the things that I'm doing, and I look forward to more fun. If I plan it, it won't be fun. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anne. Up next, we have Ed De Leon of PM. Hello, good afternoon. Mark, yeah. you've been in the industry for 40 years. How do you find the industry today? Today? Yeah. That's a great question. I think there's a lot of good that I see. The young, I think it's time for us dinosaurs to listen to the young kids. They seem to know where we're going musically and uh, visually through special effects and, and, and all the things, all the high tech things people are doing in the different platforms. We need to listen to them. The one thing that I don't like about the industry now is every, everything is too fast. People don't say hi to each other anymore. 
there's no element of, oh my God, that's so and so. You know, you put the respect, like when I see the likes of Abbasid Valdez or so on, I immediately remember how that artist paved the way for, for myself, for me, for my 40 years. Basil, Rico J, Haji, my father, Kurt Rivera, all of them paved the way. Even singers who don't know I'm alive, Kenny Loggins, James Ingram, Josh Groba, these people are the ones who help me and love the music that I do. I want to sing songs similar to what they're doing. So these people don't know me, but they paved the way. The people, the new artists, the new stars, the new Sikat Nagmayan, they don't even care to know what that person has done. They just go on with their own lives. The way, and even with, with, with their relationship with the press, there is nothing. I don't know, I could be wrong, but there seems to be, hello Paul, and then they don't remember you anymore. There's, that's what we had back then. We literally had that back then. I may forget your name, but I'll remember your question 10 years ago. I'll remember what you wrote in this tabloid and when you were writing in tabloids. These are the things that we need to do, this, this kind of relationship, this kind of knowing where you came from and not where you are. You have to know where you came from. You have to know that you know these are the people. You are the people we will see on our way up as well as on our way down. So you better make friends, you better be humble, you better be respectful. That's what I think lacks today. You started at the time that they call another golden era of the music industry. Because the early 80s was a time when yes. everybody was making money. Yes. But of course, you were making more money than the others. Not really, because I was just starting. Yeah, that's it. But then you were among the top sellers. I was one of the highest paid recording artists, did you know? Yeah. One peso a song. No, 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 but then... Before it was four centavos a song. Oh, wow. My first recording contract with wow. my tour, four centavos a song. <laughs> so when they said, oh, yeah, Basil gets one peso. When I got one peso, I said, yes, I'm like Basil now. <laughs> Yeah, but that was the golden era, the yes. next golden era of the music industry. Yes, you're very right. Do you think we can still go back to the time? We can. Filipino singers, Filipino artists, I'm confident, yes. Even producers and writers from the Philippines, yes. Because we never forget our culture, we never forget our people. In fact, we seem to be more, the young, the young, the younger singers now and writers, they seem to be more vocal about it. Thank God. Then, uh, during the 80s, we were not. We would go to singing festivals and win, look at them. But we were not vocal about it. We were not passionate about it. We were not loud. And now I think I say loud because there's so many different platforms now where you can be loud, right? So you're making a difference now. I see it, I hear it. I can feel it in the, in the youth with, their, with them wanting, not just to know who, who she is or we is, but who is a Filipino. I see a lot of it more now. And I'm so glad, I'm so blessed to be alive to see that, and I will see it. We will not, we will always continue to be uh, faithful, patriotic, and passionate about it. But in other countries, I think they're so so set on change, real change, quick change, um, younger singers as opposed to singers who can actually sing, uh, groups of people who can dance synchronized but they're lip syncing. It seems to be okay now with the public. They pay big bucks to watch good looking people lip sync or sing over their voices. That wasn't allowed in the 80s, right? right? I mean, you better sing. You better have a good band behind you. Oh, I love the horn section. But now no one really notices anything. If the song hits you in a certain way and it makes you feel a certain way, then you love that song. But you forget it so quickly. Because a new one comes along. Back in our time, during the 80s, we really took the time to tell a story. And we didn't have all the platforms they have today to get our story told. So now I challenge the youth, the new songwriters, the new singers, the new actors, the new everything. Represent, you need to represent, you need to take whatever we left, whatever baton na hulug sa ano, sa ground, you need to pick it up and wave it higher. You need to be an expression, an extension of what they did during the 80s. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your question. That was Ed De Leon of Pia. Up next, we have June Nardo of Tonight and Tempo. June? I can't see you, eh? I know, I can see it now. There you are. Get water, guys. 
Congratulations, Martin. Nice to see you again. You too, Joe. Thank you. You're always there. Mm -hmm. Martin, uh, natatandam po kayo, anong concert mo ang nagpaiyak sa'yo ng todo? Wow. That's a great question because I really have an answer. Remember when my mom and dad split? Okay. okay. And then we were going through some sort of a change where I was supposed to do a Valentine's concert with my dad, but he decided to not be in the show because, because of that. Because of his split with my mom. Mm -hmm. I went to Cebu and I did a show in Cebu and I sang Say That You Love Me. And I'm going through all of this without anyone knowing it. And then they all continued singing. And it was so loud, I put my mic down like that. And everybody sang the song for me, and I broke down. Oh, I mean, I broke down. It's like you all do. That's why I have this secret love relationship with Cebu. It happened in the University of Carlos, San Carlos. San Carlos. Yeah? I forgot the, the actual date, but right, right after that Valentine's, right after I was going through all of this mess with my side of the world, my, my family, I was sung to. Cebu sang to me like, we know that you're going through something and let us sing for you because I was really getting so emotional. I, literally, I dropped to my knees. I dropped my mic. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> you asked the question. You asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> Anong sasabi mo naman sa influx ng mga K-pop stars, BTS, Blackpink, Chuchuchu na pumakagal ng ayon ng fanmeet dito, nagko-concept na, na para bang nag-shift na yung mga kapat kapataan lang naman yung pero yung kapataan lang naman yung pero yung kapataan lang naman yung pero yung mga kapataan hindi lahat kapataan lang naman how about you? Oh, I like BTS. I like yeah. the way they move. Yeah. I like the synchronization of how they yeah. do the Um I, I, I don't know what they sound like if they're singing solo as soloists. Okay. I don't know. Yes, yes, um, yes. But I, what I love more are the producers of their songs. They know how to write the song that fits the group. Okay. So dami dami K-pop, so dami dami uh, J-pop and P-pop and so on. You gotta have something else. Yes. Hindi lang the same. Ang maganda sa mga P-pop, uh, sa lahat ng mga P, magaling tayo, magaling ang Pinoy magano, mag, mag, to improve uh, something, whatever the, the sound, the music, the look, the steps. We have a way of improving it without looking like we're copying it. Yes. Some people might think P-pop is a, is a copy yeah, of, yeah, of yeah, K-pop. Yeah. Dahil may K-pop, may J-pop. Hmm. Pero nag-away sila kung sino na una, J-pop or P-pop. You know that, right? They're like, they're like saying, no, we were first, we were first. Well, we can say we're better. Because yes. we yes. learned from K-pop. No? We, because we learned from K-pop, we learned from J-pop. So P-pop can be an improvement. Or a, 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 the next stage or the next level where everyone is singing, uh, how they treat each other on stage, the blending of their, of their steps as opposed to their voices, because you can tell that these groups have to sing over their voices. Impossible, the money, the steps, you know. It should be a little. There should be some of that. Yes. But there's none. It's beautiful, right? <laughs> That's what they need to watch. Yes, of course. What can you say about? We palaba naman natin SB19, the mga K-pop, J-pop. All I can say is at least metro kami. Ah, yes. Philippines wala? Because I think that's a trend and I don't think it's going to go away. Yes. K-pop has been there forever and no one ever paid attention to it. Korean actors and singers, they've always been there. But because of the K-pop thrill, it's becoming more, no, I hope it happens here in the Philippines too, where they will see also our good actors. In the diets of K-pop, we know about the great actors and directors and writers of movies in Korea. Ang galing nila. Hopefully our P-pop, when, when, when the groups you mentioned are all over the world performing, yes. that they'll be interested to see our actors and directors and movie makers. Hindi lang P-poppers, no? 
that they'll be able to get the same interest in our country and our, our, our artists from the Philippines. Hindi naman, threat ba sila? Ha? Threat? Threat? To me? Yeah? No. Absolutely not. For 40 years. Yes, I mean, 40 years. You can get a million people in the audience, but you didn't take 40 years. Yeah. You, oh, did it, you did it overnight. You know. Huh? 40 ka lang dito. 40 na nga, 40 na ikit. Okay, pumunta pa yun sa Jingle Extra, tumaguhan yan. Oo. Nagpumunta ka lang, papaginita ko namin, tumaguhan ka lang. Kanta mo. Now, if it was then, during the 80s, yes, okay, okay. threat so. talaga. Mm -hmm. Remember the 90s when the bands came? Yes, yes. The big threat sa mga solo singers. Oh, oh, oh. Yung mga audiences, na, yung mga shows namin. I did a show one time in Loyola, mm. and a few meters away is Mary Noel, right? Uh, right? Eraser heads, the concert came uh, in Loyola. Eraser heads, I could hear the screams mm -hmm. from the backstage <laughs> of Loyola. Uh, they had full pack show, I think there was more than sold out. Mm. My show only had 200 people. Most of them, production people from the show. Mm. As in, no one in the audience. <coughs> they were all in there, you know. So my manager at the time, Georgie Dinko, came uh. up to me and said, Mark, there's nobody here. Let's cancel the show. You know what I did? How many people are there? They said 200. That those 200 people, really wanted to watch me. Mm -hmm. So that, and then the answer to the next question, which is what was your best performance ever? Uh, that was my best performance okay. ever. I didn't okay. take out one song. Mm -hmm. I had standing ovations galore from 200 people. You know what 200 people looks looks like in Loyola? But almost like this restaurant. Uh, uh. But when you turn out the lights, I don't see any of you. So same performance, right? That's where I learned that there's no such thing as a big show or a small show. That's where I learned that the show must go on. I was there backstage. You can cancel mo pa. You can miya. You can miya talaga. Miya? So no, I didn't miya. Okay. I didn't miya. I I I finished the show, and it's probably to, to even to this day one of my best performances ever. Two hundred people. Matatanong pa. Matatanong pa. Ano ba matatanong? Dandal sa sin. Masarap yung mga tanong mo eh. Gusto mo yung ano, yung yung artist na wala hindi na gano'n, walang sagot? Opo! Oo naman, gusto ko nagdandaldal mo, no? Di ba? In love ka ba ngayon? Sobra. Okay. You wanna meet her? Yes. Come here, baby. Yes. This is Anish. Come on. Oo, pinakalala mo yan sa amin eh. Yeah, but she's shy. Oo, di ba? Okay. Asa ah, siya ba yun? That's June Arno. Naniniwala ka sa kasal? Well, one of these days. Yes. And we won't hide it. Okay. We will tell you. Yes. But if I was to get married, she's the one. Yes. Wow, that's nice. Yes. Ayan na, naging kayo ko na. Naging personal na ako siya, Martin. <laughs> Naninibago na ako, no? Hindi. <laughs> We're just friends. <laughs> Oo, oh, di ba? Sanay na kami ganun. Every time they say they're just friends, you know they're sleeping together, right? Come on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can you say about the different platforms now? Well, it's a here today, gone tomorrow kind of thing. If you can last on the platforms, I mean, I'm not going to follow myself with a camera. Here I am at the, uh, yeah. you know, I, I hate uh -huh. that. I, I, and every artist that does it, they have a whole crew following them. That seems to be the thing now. And maybe I'll be lost. That's where I am going to be lost. Because I want there to be a little mystery between you and me. I want there to be a little bit of excitement when you come to watch me. You didn't see me every freaking day eating in a different restaurant posting. I do it, yes, yes. I do it too. Yes. But I want there to be like in the 80s the way Ed was talking, Karina. Yes. There has to be that, that element of mystery and, and question marks in your head. Ah, oh, you know what I mean? We know all of them. We know all of them. Social media, what can you say about social media? I think social media is very important uh, to the world, not just to the music industry, uh, to the concert industry, to the, our music industry or entertainment industry. It's very important because it seems to be the only way we can find out who's worth watching, who's not worth watching. 
who's got more followers so I can endorse my product with that artist. Back in the day, you really didn't know unless you watched a lot of that person's movies and concerts. But nowadays, you can tell by the amount of following that person has. That's how that person gets endorsements now. It's really different now. So it helps us. It also helps us get the word out. You know, we, we don't have to do these posters. I don't know why they still do this, but it seems to be the social media is the way yes, it goes. Yes. Yes. Martin, ano yung okay lang ba sa iyo yung associate yung yung word na mad sa iyo until now? Ano? It looks like mad, no? Yes, 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 yes mad, di ba? Did you hear that? They got mm, it. Only people yes. from the 80s get that. <laughs> That's why I did that, to look like bad. Martin After Dark. Yes, yes, then ayon. Yes, I'm fine with it because my madness is what kept me alive. Without my madness, I think I wouldn't be here today. You used to get mad? All the time. Eh, all the time. Saan? Ah, sa mga man, balit na bagay pa minsan eh. Hindi ba hindi ba hindi ito food ko? Yung adobo ko, walang kulang sa sauce. Ayon. Kakapit ko niya, di ba? Ha? Oh, si Katali. Toothpaste na wala. Oh, you remember that? Galing mo, ha? She puts the toothpaste away, just so you know. Congratulations, Martin. Thank you, I love you, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you for all the 40 years. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was Jukar tonight in Tempo. For our next session, we invite Nikki Wang and Vanilla Satter. Here's a microphone from Sir Juan. Following you. We have the same topic. Sorry, I'm sorry. Who's talking? It's alright. Nikki, Nikki Wang. Hi. Hi, Martin. Congratulations. Well, Thank they you. have already asked all the, the good questions. You know, without being too patronizing, no, I just wanted to know. Because one of the first press cons I attended uh, as a movie reporter was your press con in, uh, it's around, it's more than 10 years ago in Robertson's Manila. And, you know, I'm trying to remember that time. That's a long time ago. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that you you, you don't age. I mean, you're the same person. I uh, I just wanted to know what's your secret. My secret? Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm laughing all the time, uh, or I'm crying. Don't hold it in. I, I don't hold things in anymore. I'm not worried about how I look. I'm not worried about you know even back then. Um, but I think the one secret I can share with you that I think is could answer your questions. I'm always, even when I'm not happy, I I love to be in pursuit of happiness. Sometimes, for me, you have to hurt before you can really feel good. Or I mean, to be more symbolic, if the harder it rains, the brighter the sunshine. For me, it's. Even the idea of wanting to be happy or to do something that makes me happy, to always look forward to something every day. That's why I always have to be busy. Sometimes my, my, my people behind me, they're so tired because I'm so full of energy when it comes to wanting to do something. I'm worried if four or five months from now there's no offer or no schedule. I'm already worried because I love to look forward to something. I love to prepare, oh my god, in April I'm going to be in, things like that. I love to be spontaneous, but I love to always have something to look forward to. I think that might be the reason why you might see the same guy from back then till now, because that never ended. A lot of things about me have changed a lot. I'm slower, my voice is not as high as it used to be. Um, my breathing is not the way it was then, then I didn't even know I was breathing. Now I'm even talking about breathing. That's the difference. That guy didn't talk about breathing. This guy does talk about breathing. That's the difference. But both guys, from the past to now, that's it. We always want something to look forward to. And we hold on to that. I guess it's hope, happiness. I love to be in love. I'm, I'm in love all the time. Uh, but now with, with, with Ange now, she's been in my life, what, 15 years, sorry, sweetheart? I've been keeping her a secret for so long because as you know, our world can really be bad. The bashers don't stop when they see pictures of us together. Because obviously, that's one of the fans who wants to see me not with her. What great timing. Huh? Bye. 
I'm going to the light? Look into the light. Yeah, so I, that's why. I wasn't, not that I'm ashamed of our relationship, but I just didn't want my world to consume her the way you know our world does. But now I figure after 40 years, it's time that you know what makes me click, what makes me so happy is Ange. Ange, Ange, Ange del Rosario, whatever. It's true though. Yeah. Oh, she's so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> But of course, Martin, uh, 40 years is, is, is uh, well, it's a feat in itself, of course. Um, when we talk about career longevity, you're one of the people in showbiz who have, you know, who have long-lasting career. What did you do in the past that made your career last this long? I mean, yeah, you mentioned about your relationship with the press. Uh, you have mentioned your your struggle as, a, as an artist. Is there a point in your life that you, you doubted that you're going to last this long. To doubt that I was going to last this long, it's every other day. Every other day there's doubt. I mean, there's this belief. What? Really? How the, that's why when they asked the question earlier about the 40 years, I can't believe it's been 40 years. But I think the secret there is that I never considered what I have as a career. It was, as a kid, I was, it was a dream. A dream come true. That's the guy you met, living the dream. And I've been living it for 40 years. This is the best job ever, where I get to go and make people happy, make people sing along, maybe forget their troubles for two hours, two and a half hours, um, maybe go on, like during the pandemic, I went on a Facebook Live, I've never done that before. I did it for 122 days straight. I brought my sister, my twin sister, who is actually the real, sis the real singer in the family. I brought her out to sing with me for those 122 days and now she's on Kumu every other day. I mean, I just love to change people's lives in a positive way. I, I wanted to keep them company during the pandemic because I knew people were really getting frustrated about just being at home. So I invaded Facebook Live by singing all my songs for them and chatting with people, answering questions. It means so much to me, and it's not a career, because I think someone with a career wouldn't have done that, because I jeopardized endorsements, I jeopardized concerts. No one's going to pay to watch me anymore if they can watch me for free on Facebook Live. So, But it didn't matter. Those things don't matter to me. I think maybe that's why I'm still here for 40 years. It's never been a career. It's never been a job. Oh, God, I have a press call at 2 o'clock. Okay, let's go. It's never been like that. It's like, oh my God, really? Come on, let's go. What are they gonna ask? What are the questions? Oh my God. It's always been like that. I've been living the dream. And of course, you keep inspiring the people around you. Hopefully, and if, they, if there's anything I've done in my 40 years that has inspired anyone, I hope it's inspired them to know that it's okay to fall sometimes. Yeah. You can be the concert king for as long as you don't be. Yeah. Is it me? <laughs> You can be many things in the business, but the one thing you should never be is satisfied with yourself, with your audience, with your performance. You can always do better. Thank you. And thank you for inspiring us right now. I hope so. Thank, thank you. you, Martin. Thank you very much. That was Nikki Wan, Vanilla Standard. And I think for the last question, we have Erwin from Vanilla. Erwin. Mark, Erwin from Anandana. So, salute to your uh, 40 years in the uh, show business. So, since you are celebrating your 40th anniversary, how are you going to co compare the 1982 Martin to the 2022 Martin event? Mm. I think it's up to you to compare. Me, I'm not going to. Because if I go back to that guy, I'm going to have many regrets. I'm going to say that my voice was higher then, I was thinner then, I was lighter. There were so many things about me then. But I, I'm more in tune now, if you want to compare that he was out of tune a lot. And Major, I've, I've learned to be more in tune. See, baby's trying to think, when was he out of tune? I'll show you the, vid the video. Can you imagine, opening number, wrong key, the whole song. Beginning to end. Anyway, uh, to compare the two would be something I don't think I will do because I may have uh, be afraid to come out on stage. I always like the element of surprise. I always like not to over rehearse and over plan and overthink. I always work with the audience I have that night. So I'm hoping that that audience will not compare 
the 1982 to the 2022 market. I hope they're just anxious to hear the songs you used to sing in 82 with the body and the voice and the face of the 2022. <laughs> One more question. Sure. Uh, you dream of guesting in Ellen show, right? Yes, I so do. Are you still aiming to uh, guest in an international uh, talk show? Or? Uh, you know, I, 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 there were, I had many opportunities. Uh, there's another time that, remember Arsenio Hall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I called him on a pay phone in a shopping mall. I got this uh, close to the talent coordinator. I said, I'm, a, I'm just like, I'm like the Arsenio Hall of, back, back then I had mad, the TV show. I'm like the Arsenio Hall of the Philippines. I, I'm the one talking to this guy, to this girl. And she goes, I'm so sorry, but are you a friend of Arsenio? I said, absolutely not. So she goes, well, I'm sorry, he only guests his friends. So if there is a chance to guess on one of the those talk shows or any show in America, I had another chance too. Remember the TV show called The World's Best? And it was Pops? Do you know that was offered to me? You know this? Yeah. It was offered to me, but I, I but why, why couldn't I do it? I was busy. I was the one scheduled. I was the one who suggested Pops. I said she would be the better judge. That's how she got the thing. To this day, so that was my first opportunity to be in an American or an in, in international stage. But I, I imagine I've been dreaming about this my whole life. I gave it to the ex-wife, and she got to meet James Coburn and all those people, you know. So um, yeah, but I would love to. I would really love to be a, and represent. It's so nice. I'm so proud to be a Filipino artist, and I really want the world to know what we have. So I'm so happy with the new singers of today, the Casey Tandingans and so on. People are drooling over them, again, because of all the social media. They know who they are. They don't have to guest on a talk show anymore. Are you kidding? Because of the news, the platforms now, we don't need to do that anymore. So my call to Arsenio was not needed. <laughs> Just make sure you do something that's followable, worth following. Thank you, Mark, for the honor show. Thanks so much. Thank you, that was Irvin of Anong Ganap. And for the last question, we have Mr. Punch. Yes, Punch and Judy. But yes, your name is Judy Punch and Judy. Yeah. Sir, uh, I don't know if you still remember any song from that very first album. And if there is one song from that album, is there any chance that you're going to sing it on the concert? On the concert, there's a lot from the first album. Ah, yes. Be My Lady, Pain, Gotta Look For It. We'll see. Actually a lot, no? Marami. I was almost all. That's what I'm saying. I had to relearn. Imagine that's an album I did with Vicor 40 years ago. And the only song you remember is Me and My Lady. Right? Yes. So I'm hoping people will remember the other songs that we brought back to life. So last time. Yes, sir. You said there's one song there that you better meaning. Yung pinakata pa sa mga fans nga. On the first album? Oh yeah, you, you, you are to me. Oh, you are to me. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's one of the songs on the album. It's a song I composed for an up-and-coming artist that the fans asked Homer Flores to write a song for their fan, their idol. But Homer needed English lyrics. I didn't English. So we wrote the song for, I asked questions from the fans. I think there were three fans with us about what they feel about their idol and I wrote the song You Are To Me. What's your next question? Who's the artist? Right? It was for a new artist coming up by the name of Pax Fernandez. So to sing that song now with the likes of Robin, can you imagine singing with Robin You Are To Me? A song that was written for his mom before I even knew she was gonna be his mom. <laughs> More meaningful. See, these are the stories I hope to share on November 19th at the theater at Solaire. So you need to go there. Get right. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Punch. Thank you very much. And that is our last question for this afternoon. I think, do we have any more questions from our press? No, they're asking, when can we go home? I'm <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us and for those questions. Maraming salamat. That concludes our Q&A. This time is for Martin. Please invite everyone to support. Yes, you. please.
uh, Viva Life is inviting all of you to the theater at Solaire, November 19, I guess, 8 o'clock at night, no? 8 p.m., Marvin Carrido and his orchestra will be my, my, in the background, my special guest, our special guest is Louis Ocampo, who celebrates 45 years in the industry. We hope to share that with you, and we know we can try our very best to bring back the old Martin, the young Martin, and the new Martin, all in one night. There you have it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.